And our very first guest is Jack Burns, who is founder and CEO of Offer AI. Offer AI is a company that we're going to tell you about. But first of all, we are going to tell you what an iBuyer is. I bet you don't know, but by the end of this program, you'll know. Jack, how do I describe an iBuyer? Well, an iBuyer was a term that was coined by actually Inman that describes Inman News, Inman News. owned by started yep, by Brad, Brad Inman. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, to describe a an entity that does uh, purchases on an industrial level, where they buy houses like in a mass. Buy ugly house in mass yeah. using, technology, using technology, where they buy directly from the seller and then sell directly to the buyer. And I met Jack this year when I was doing a story on this, of course, because that's what we do on Candy's Dirt. We write about all the new nuances and the new things and the new technology that's marrying into real estate right now, which is making it the most exciting era, really, to be in real estate. And I met him when I was doing a story. He was really one of the most fascinating people of 2019. So I wanted to do this with him so we could learn more about the company and the process and how in the world did you get into this? Do you have a real estate background? Do you have a tech background? Are you from Silicon Valley? I mean, are you from Mars? I mean, how did this happen? Well, first of all, you're, you're so kind and so generous with that fascinating thing. Thank you. Oh, well. uh, But uh, I think there's a lot of fascinating people, including yourself, oh. in this industry. Um, it is. It's true. Yeah. And, um, well, I, have my, my, I cut my teeth in um, real estate investments in Washington State oh. and uh, got into the whole short sale, the underbelly of real estate. I had some drivers, bird dogs out there and we were knocking on doors and doing pre-foreclosures. And Was this back in the, the... Back in the boom days. The boom days. Mm-hmm. through, you know, nine, ten. Right. And um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Uh, and then I um, moved from there to Texas most recently. Uh, when I uh, saw the space that the iBuyers were, were carving out in certain mm-hmm. um, geographic locations, of which Texas is a big one. But when I was watching the, the iBuyer, um, the, the trend starting with Open Door back in, I believe, 2014, 13 yes. or 14. Yes. And they raised, I think, $360 million. Mm-hmm. And then OfferPad came in shortly after them and raised exactly the same amount of money, coincidentally. And then uh, Open Door ended up raising something like two billion. Two billion dollars. And then in 2016, Zillow saw what was happening. And they got into the game. And they dove in. Right. Eight first. Never. Zillow's never going to sit on the sidelines, right? Right. Right. And um, so then uh, lots of others came popping in, and, and it's it's a trend that's happening, that's changing the face of real estate as we know it. It's uh, it's putting some squeeze on agents because. Mm-hmm. It's going directly to the seller to get that inventory directly from them. Exactly. And let me explain to consumers who might be reading, reading, watching, listening. This is what everyone is so concerned about, this putting the squeeze on agents. In other words, bypassing them, kind of shoving them out of the way and saying, you can go right to your computer and buy a home and actually get it financed there too. Or, I, or sell your home. Or sell your home. Which exactly. Is, yeah, the first step. Exactly. So everyone's really paying attention because as I understand it right now, it's about 5% of the market, 4 to 5% of the market, right? Uh, I don't know that exact number. Well, that's that's what, what my is. research, I think, has told me. But we just heard from Brad Inman, who is the guru, the oracle of real estate. Brad, just a little background is actually how I got into what I'm doing. Because I went to my very first Inman conference years ago in California. I'm a real estate reporter. I was at D Magazine at the time covering real estate. And I listened to Brad Inman. And I said, I don't know what he's talking about. I mean, I need to learn what's going on in this field if I'm really going to be a good real estate reporter. So I got into it, I researched it, and I realized the change that was coming, which is what he would, this is what happened to him. He was covering technology in Silicon Valley and he saw the change coming. And so I kind of brought it to Texas and said, hey guys, y'all, there's a lot of changes coming. And I said this eight to 10 years ago and here we are. So Brad just said in his recent predictions for the next decade or for even the next year, that by the end of 2020, 50% of the real estate transactions in this country will be done with iBuyers. Now, if if he had said by the end of the decade, I might agree with him, but I think that's 
That's a lot. Fifty well, percent. He said in the in the the major U.S. markets. Major that's a U.S. Big markets. difference okay. between all of it, which is why it's hard to answer what percentage of the, okay. the market is is being captured by i buyers because it depends on where you are. Um, in hot markets like Texas, within a certain price range, which I've got a slide I want to show you. Okay. That um, and maybe we should jump into that prediction. Yeah, let's jump into let's, some uh, numbers here. And let's look at that prediction first of all. This is what, uh, specifically what Brad said in, uh, that was actually very recently, uh, a couple a few of weeks, weeks ago, ago. Mm -hmm. the time we are filming Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then what also makes this, uh, oh, and he said every successful agent is going to have some type of an instant offer solution on their own or in partnership with iBuyers, with right. existing big iBuyers. And when we say iBuyers, we're talking about open door, offer pad, not Zillow offers all those guys. All these different because the smart agents are not going to get let the railroad just kind of run over them. Right. They're going to figure out a way to stay up and stay 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 significant. Right. Yes. Right. And you yeah. have an answer for that. I do you? have an answer yes. to that. Yes. We'll talk yes. about that in a little bit. Lead in. Pay attention, folks. Candy. Here's <laughs> another one I thought was interesting. Okay. I to include, include here, Candy. Is, yeah. Uh, the the market's going to continue. That this is uh, staff writer Inman predicting that. It's going to continue to be a seller's market. The mm -hmm. inventory is going to continue to be the, the king, which makes the i buyers even more interesting because they're out there getting those sellers. So, so it's going to continue to be a very competitive space out there getting those listing leads. The listing leads, right? The sell leads, right? So, um, this is what I wanted to show you. This is Zillow's markets that they're in right now, mm -hmm. and this is the price per square foot in their markets. You can see that the average-ish area, with the exception of Los Angeles, mm -hmm. which is up there, which I think they're, they're actually experimenting in Los Angeles with this uh, the, thing, because yeah. it's way above the, the typical iBuyer range, which is a, a 200, 250-ish, right. maybe $300,000 average price in fact, of a house. Let me make that really clear to anyone who's watching. This is not, we're not talking the high-end homes here. We're talking homes that are generally under $400,000. Or less. Because. Because. Because they're taking a hit. And if they're going to sell their house non-MLS, where they could get the top dollar, if you've got a $500, $700 million house, you're going to 20% hit on that is a lot of money. So we know that the, the person who's the, the person who's selling, the homeowner who's selling to the iBuyer is taking a hit, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. They're not, they're not, they're going to make more if they put it on the market. In the traditional way, correct? But that's what's that's what's so interesting about this space too, Kenny, is that if the market is showing us that sellers are don't willing care. to take that hit, they don't care. They're willing for right. the for the convenience and the ease right. of of getting rid of this house. They have a relocation. Right. They have some type of a life event where they right. need to move for whatever reason. Right. And they don't want to put it on the market. They don't want to have Show clean it up, stage house. it paint it, fix everything that's going on and have, you know, have strangers walking mm -hmm. through your home. I mean, I would make everyone wear booties in my house. It's gross. You know, mm -hmm. have people coming in off the street. So I get it. Plus, you know, a lot of people are inheriting homes across the country. They're going into the family and they, you know, really just want to get rid of it and liquidate it so mm -hmm. they can move on. They're not going to move back there because, you know, society's so mobile now. So there's a lot of reasons why this does work. But I want to make that really clear because I think that there's been a little bit of dishonesty with, not with you all, but with some of the other iBuyers that, oh, it's this, there, it doesn't cost you more. It does cost you more. And, but the convenience is there. It's just like anything in life, right? Yes. And there's typically the way that the iBuyers typically work mm -hmm. is, They'll make an offer of some amount, which is pretty much sight unseen. They might do a quick little cursory evaluation, but then they're going to need to get inside the house and evaluate it and do a right. walkthrough and then say, yep, that needs fixing, that needs fixing. And then now they make the real offer right. for what it is, which uh, on average, I believe it's somewhere between 8 to 11% right. off of, of what they would typically uh, get on an MLS sale. With a 6% split commission to uh, buying and selling agent? Uh, no, that's without the agent involved. That's okay. with no agent involved. So no agent they're, involved. They're, okay. they're, they have their service fee and their, their transaction fees and all that baked into that 
8 to 11 percent. Gotcha. Range. Okay. But what I'm saying is if they chose a traditional agent who oh, versus, went in, yes. that was 6 percent, it's 3 to the buying, 3 to the selling, unless, and a lot of people don't know this either, you can negotiate commissions. Mm -hmm. It's perfectly legal to do that. When someone comes over, just say, nope, I'm not going to do 6 percent, I'm going to do 5 percent or whatever. I mean, that's that's totally up to the home buyer. But and another thing that there is, is in their niche as an iBuyer mm -hmm. is how much fix-ups need to be done because they don't want to go in and do a complete overhaul. Right. It's a certain type of carpet and paint, mm -hmm. a lipstick on it, and then mm -hmm. push out the door, mm -hmm. and they're, they're done with it. Yeah. So that's why it's nice to let the iBuyer take care of that, right? Right. Well, that's what I'm talking about. The yeah. iBuyers look for those type of homes oh. that they're going mm -hmm. to acquire. Right. Then they only have to do a little bit before they do the disposition. Mm -hmm. And then they didn't get their hands really dirty with a lot of fix-up costs. And they're because they're looking for the quick turnaround, right. just like any any real estate investor is interested in a quick turnaround. It's got to be quick, short, because you put it on the market, you sell it. You right. don't want to have it sitting out there sucking up time, right? Right. And nine times out of ten, I'm told from different sources, and Zillow is one of them, that it's going to turn into a listing lead. So if a seller engages Zillow offers for an instant offer on their house mm -hmm. that they, nine times out of 10 are gonna be a listing lead that they don't wanna go through the instant offer thing. They're gonna change their mind and say, you know what, I wanna go ahead and right. make a sale. We'll see if we which, can get more money out of it. And then Zillow would tie chi it over to their to agent, agent, to their premier mm -hmm. agent, who mm -hmm. would then take it from there. But up until that point, and uh, you had asked about uh, Zillow earlier, is mm -hmm. that Zillow's first engagement with the seller is with an advisor. So they have their advisors, um, uh, they, their buyer's hat on as the advisor who's talking with the seller on behalf of the buyer with the seller, which is a very important factor here mm -hmm. because if you've got the seller selling their house to a big eye buyer, the seller is selling to the buyer. There's no agent involved. So there's no one looking out for their best interest at all. It's They're subject to whatever that eye buyer is going to negotiate and be willing to give them with directly dealing with the seller. But with this advisor, the advisor is is to be working on behalf of the seller, then? No. On the buyer, no? The buyer, they work on behalf of Zillow. On behalf of Zillow, the buyer. Yeah, so it's a Zillow advisor. But if they can't make the deal work with their advisor, then they'll pass it over to the agent. To the which agent. the agent then has a fiduciary duty to the seller. But those premier person. agents pay for that, too. Yes, that's the big That's another thing that I don't know if all consumers know. They... That is how Zillow makes their money. They charge the premier agents for those leads. Yes. Exactly. Yes. It, to me, Zillow is the smartest company in the face of the earth because they get free information and charge for it, charge well, for access to it. <laughs> and they've got the eyeballs, too. They have the tremendous eyeballs. To see what yes. the house is worth. And while yes. they're checking that out, they're seeing a little flash of you. You want to sell your house right. instantly with this instant offer. And that agent has paid dearly for that little flash. But that's okay. It's it's a free country, right? Well, no, no. I mean, no, Zillow, Zillow <laughs> yes. offers is doing an ad. Within the they're doing it all, exactly. Site. It's right. The oh, they're doing the ad. Yes. Next, the I'm talking about the premier agent then. Yes, gotcha. Yes, okay. Too. So what you're saying, and this is very interesting, is look at Los Angeles there, guys. Mm -hmm. 734 per square foot. That's high-priced real estate. Yeah, that's like that is Seattle. out of the yeah. norm for the iBuyer. So what they're doing there is maybe experimenting with higher-end homes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Which will be interesting to see how that pans how that out. pans out. Because yeah, yes. LA, they're kind of, you're the, they're the edgy, yes. liberal, you know, willing to take chances on different things. Right. That might be why they chose them to. And it's also a very mo highly mobile area. People are constantly moving in and moving out, and they're all moving to Texas. We yeah. know, so you know. <laughs> Everybody's coming to Texas. Everyone's coming here. So look at how affordable our homes look up there compared to everyone else. My gosh, mm -hmm. except for Charlotte, of course, but Dallas, Texas. That and this is not in the city. This is going to be in the peripheral suburban areas too, because yeah. we're not going to find too many two hundred and four per square foot homes in Dallas unless you're going in the peripheral areas. Yeah, very three interesting. Two bass mm -hmm. suburban type. Mm -hmm. One car garage, two car garage kind of things. So what we're talking about now is that there's three or four companies, four or five companies out there. And by the way, SoftBank is the money behind Open Door. SoftBank is one of them, right? And SoftBank is also behind one of the higher end brokerages called Compass, which is a, no, a whole nother story and why you need to read Candy's Dirt in order to keep up with all this stuff that's going on. Um, that maybe for another, another uh, video podcast. But all these companies are out there 
what are you doing that's so different and unique? Well, what we're doing, and, and you asked about my background mm -hmm. in the investment side and watching what was happening in the iBuyer space, and we decided to jump into that space. And when you and I first talked, when I first uh, launched the, we had a bot driven iBuyer, which was a bot that engaged the seller with a twist to the iBuyer uh, mechanism where instead of making an instant offer like they do, we decided to be different and go at it this way and say, what if we could get a bot to engage the seller, a Facebook bot. Okay, let's tell everyone what a bot is. A uh, Facebook bot is um, it's not artificial intelligence. It is short of that. It is a, a program um, that you put in place for questions and answers, if thens. Interactive a little bit. It's interactive. Gotcha. So based on what you answer to my question to you, if I'm the bot, uh, a, a widget that shows up on a website that engages the seller with questions, it's sort of like a, a, a robot kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That's what the bot stands for. Mm -hmm. And then based on what you answer, it then provides different questions for you. And then based on what you answer that, it gives you different questions for that, just logging all of that into an equation at the end, which we would then spit out a number and say, here's what we're willing to offer you for your house. That's what we had had in place that we have pivoted from because we watched what was happening and we said, you know what, we're gonna go with the way that the trend is going rather than trying to break the, the edge to that because we're finding out that, that sellers were not real anxious to engage a bot to sell their house. We experimented, experimented with that and as it turns out, that was the case. So, very easily, Tai Chi over over a six month period, we we pivoted into what we have now, which is kind of a hybrid model. Well, no, it's directly in line with the AI buyers. We're okay. following what they're. We're not trying to change anything. We're going okay. directly with, with what they're, what doing, they're doing, with some extra spice that I'm going to show you in a minute. Okay. Because it, it's going to set the, the it's going to change things for how the whole AI buyer space works. I love the extra spice. We're That's doing, great. Yes. Yes. So, <laughs> Well, let's talk about this for a minute. So, this is, so JP and Associates Real Estate, who is yes. a, a very uh, on the cutting edge uh, brokerage. They You're based in Dallas, started here in Dallas, and is one of the fastest growing. The, yeah, the I fastest think it's growing. the fastest growing yeah. brokerage. And it's, 100%, it's at 100%, yeah. which is a whole other story, but the, yep. the agents keep 100% of their commission, and that's one of the reasons. But he's also a very nurturing broker, and he has just got so many great ideas to help them stay in the business and do well. And he's got other things that you'll be hearing about on Candy's Dirt shortly too. But yeah. anyhow, so you started with J. Yes. Park. Yes, and they are our first brokerage. First brokerage. They came on board. Mm -hmm. Their agents can now participate in this ecosystem. It's kind of like, I put this on a stadium view because think of, of Offer AI, the same of our company. Yes, Offer AI. Offer AI is kind of like the stadium where the game of off-market real estate is played mm -hmm. because, it's, uh, because agents, with seller contacts can post them into the, the platform with an instant offer request and then agents with buyer contacts can have them receive those deal alerts when the property hits the system that meets their criteria. And we are the pass-through that doesn't charge anything, is free to post, free to bring your buyers in, and we don't take anything out of the transaction. Wow. So it's a complete pass-through. We're just like, in, 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 we're current, in other way of looking at it, it's kind of like the an agent-centric Craigslist yes. for real estate. So we don't, yes. this, if you're selling a bicycle on, on Craigslist, Craigslist doesn't take anything from that. So we're kind of the same way, except for the house. We don't take, which is a, a new thing in, in the real estate space as well, where everybody ta has their hand in the buy. Right, they their want their the commission buy. or their referral fee or whatever. Some type of transaction, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so how are you gonna make money though? Well, by, well, by us doing it this way, it means that the big eye buyers can then also come participate with us. And oh. the agents then get to keep more of their commission. So by us not taking anything out of the, of the pie, then now it, it's wide open for everybody to come play in our stadium. And, and then the you problem. just charge for access. Popcorn. You charge for access to the stadium and popcorn, right? No, 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 no charge. To no access charge to for stadium. access to no, the stadium. No, it's all free. Okay. Come, on all free. come on We're in. We're just going to sell beer and popcorn. Got you. Yeah, and I'll okay. show you what the beer and popcorn is. Okay. I love it. So, I love this analogy. Yeah. Okay. But first, this is one of the things I wanted to talk to you about. So this this presentation is is for JPAR agents. Mm -hmm. So what I'm showing you right now is is something that we, we put together for them and 
any brokerage can also participate and do the exact same thing mm -hmm. as we're doing. So now you think about the, the ways that they get their sellers. This is how agents, real estate agents, agents get their get sellers. Their sellers. So yeah. They either have them through their relationships, relationships. Or referrals, mm -hmm. or that's their referrals, or That's the ones they have always, the way they've always done business. But then when they advertise and they try to get the people that are unknowns, those unknowns mm -hmm. to them, is their outreach through whatever kind of advertisements they do to get those. Now, what do you think these guys do to get their sellers? They advertise too. All outreach. All outreach. But they don't have, who do they have relationships with? No one. Zillow, you could argue that Zillow Well, Zillow might have more, right. And Redfin. Oh, yeah, Redfin, but, yeah. But for the most part, you know, I wouldn't say that they're, I mean, but do, you, do the sellers have that much of a relationship with Redfin, or is it the agents within? The agents within Redfin. Redfin. Yeah. And with Zillow, if they have the eyeballs that they can then, I to use that word again, mm -hmm. into an instant offer deal. So by that, we can also participate or let the agents participate in that game with them as an eye buyer themselves, which is what we've done. Because up to this point, I use this, this analogy, you mentioned this a minute ago. So the agents have been in the back of the pack trying to play catch up. This is a, an analogy of the, the Western trend of everything headed towards the, the eye. Well, it's, it's like heading out west. This yes. is, a, this is yes. heading out west with the way that the whole thing is sweeping the country with this eye buyer trend that will, it's estimated within the next three to five years, everyone's going to know what an eye buyer is because it's going to permeate all markets and everyone will know what that is. Right. Most people now have heard of, of Open Door because they're doing some pretty hardcore branding. And they're you know, advertising. Oh, they're advertising with us, which we love. They're advertising on radio. They're advertising on morning shows. That's where a lot of that investment money is going. Exactly. Yeah. So what yeah. we're doing is we're letting the agents, we're getting them up in front so they can now lead the, the wagon train. Almost as if, thank you very much, Open Door. We'll take it from here. Mm -hmm. Because the edge that the agents have is that they are acting the seller's best interest. Mm -hmm. That's the edge. Like I asked you about Zillow when I said, who is representing, who, who does that Zillow uh, advisor. advisor? They don't, they don't not they're yet. not for the, the seller. Right. right, they're for the, the company. Right, they're, they're, for, for, the they're for the buyer right. being right. Zillow, the Zillow offers. Right. So all of that is, all of those guys are the buyers and there's no one looking out for the seller's best interest. So if you think about it, all right, in this hand you have an agent, if you're the seller, and you want to sell your house, mm -hmm. and this hand you have an agent who says, okay, I will help you, I'll do some comparable analysis, I will uh, do a walkthrough, we'll talk about it, we'll sit down and I'm act on your best interest, and we're going to come to a decision that's best for you. Versus um, an eye buyer, which you know, God love them, they're going to be working with us. We're going to be sending deals to them, but they are still a buyer, and they're going to be thinking, licking their chops, going, uh -huh. "You're selling your house, huh? Let me get it from you <laughs> for as little as, as possible." Yes. Exactly, the Tommy Vu method. Right. <laughs> so that's kind of how they're approaching it. So you have those right. two different ways. Right. Now, if you're a seller, which one makes you more comfortable? Which one yeah. would you want to go to? It would be the the. Well, you know, unless I'm desperate, I want that person to kind of hold my hand and get me the best price possible, right? And even if you are desperate, get somebody to help you, who helps especially you. if you're desperate. Yes, that's true. Right. Get somebody who can look out for your best interests right. um, and help, help you navigate through the eye buyer, uh, all of the all of the, the maze that's out there, and, and, and especially because it's a new a newer thing that hasn't really happened for you know 30 40 years so mm -hmm. it would be nice to have someone to hold your hand who says okay i understand this here's how it works mm -hmm. very nice yep. so you've got the edge so they so the the agent has the seller's best interest and then as you say 90 percent of these are going to be leads anyhow right right so we're we're helping the agent represent themselves as an eye buyer themselves mm -hmm. and then all those leads that come to them or whatever they turn out to be and the agent gets all of them, which is nine times out of ten is going to be a listing lead, which perfect, good, we'll take them and right. put you on the open market on the MLS and yep. give you the top dollar and, and do it the traditional way. Now let's talk about this. Let me just interject something. You said yeah. MLS. So I buyer homes don't go on the MLS. Is that correct? Well, or the, can they? The the I buyers do sometimes buy off of the MLS mm -hmm. through agents and whatever, but they always offer way less than they would if you went directly to them without it being on on the MLS. 
Okay, let's you get that? let's clarify that for okay. for for the listeners and the viewers out there. So if I'm if I'm uh, an investor or an eye buyer, mm -hmm. open door, and you have a property on the MLS, the multiple listing service. Let's say it's one hundred and fifty thousand. One hundred fifty thousand on the MLS, yep. and you have the exact same property that we don't know what it's worth, and it's not on the MLS, and I can choose between one of these two, and I know this one that is being set by it being on the MLS, it's the market is telling us what it's worth, because if it's not being sold, if it's still sitting on the MLS, it's not getting a buyer, then I'm going, hmm, do I really want to jump on that and take my chance? Because it's already it. kind of a loser. Yeah, yeah, not to be too yeah. harsh, but yeah, yeah I mean, kind of, it's setting, yeah. it's setting the tone of what the value of the house right. is, right. versus we don't know what this one is, and the, the eye buyer can then say, you know what, I think, and they can project and predict and do their, their analytics. Looking at all the statistics the around it. And yeah. plus, after they do whatever they're going to do to the house, it's not going to go lipstick on it, back up on the market, for the, then the end user, buyer, primary residence buyer, would then look at it and go, huh, wow, that sat on the market and nobody bought it at this price, and now they've got it on even higher? They've jacked it up from there, and you want me to buy it, and it didn't sell at 150, and now they're just putting it on at 170? Uh -uh, I'm See? not doing, yeah, exactly. Right. And this is, again, where so many sellers don't understand that when they list their home for too much money, how it hurts them. I mean, it just hurts them so much. You've got to listen to reason and the market when you when you price your home because this is exactly the scenario is you put on the market it's too high then someone comes in and fixes it up and so you ask more and like no we're not going to pay more it's already set on the market for a while so you're saying that this is sort of a fresh untouched home that nobody's really seen and they would prefer that they would actually so the i buyers will actually prefer the home that's not in the mls yes. interesting yes. and so would any private investor mm -hmm. any mom and pop investor the same thing and, and um, Open Door has, has verified this in a, in a panel discussion that I watched from, actually with, with JP on the panel mm -hmm. uh, in Dallas. And, uh, yeah, they said those exact words. Said, yeah, if you're going to come to us with an offer, talking to a room full of agents, so if you're going to come to us with your house, do it before you put it on the MLS. Don't do it after because we will, we will offer you way less if you have it on the MLS and then come to us. Interesting. So that's, that's going to be the case with all of them. Now, Back to this edge that you have as an agent, with our platform, you're going to be put out there, the, your seller's property will be out there to multiple eye buyers, not just one. So you're not just talking to directly to that one eye buyer, you're talking to independent investors as well as the other eye buyers on our platform. Like everyone in the whole country. See, well, in this closed network of eye buyers and, okay. and institution, um, institutional eye buyers and mom and pop investors. Okay that are brought in by agents. Again, we're going to think about Craigslist and how Craigslist is out there on the internet for anyone right. to see and buy whatever. But this is just agent-centric. So our platform, this is a very, very important thing. Yes. Our platform is not open to the public. Okay. It's a seller cannot come into the platform and say, I'm going to sell my house on this. No. A seller has to have an agent to put it on this platform. A buyer says, he, I want to go in and buy houses up on here. Great. You can put your name in here. We're going to assign an agent to you. So I can't just as a person, not a you know, not an agent. I can't just go. Oh, cool! I could buy a house on here. No. No. Okay. You, you, but you, you can. But you need to go through an agent. I go through an agent. In fact, an agent can just put your data into the, the, the platform, and you will receive your deal alerts through your uh, text messages and email when a property is the system and it lines up with what you're looking for in your target area and your your range and everything like that. Because, and again, a lot of people don't know or realize that in the business of real estate, realtors are hit up every day from these investors. I mean, you got any people deals for me? text me, and I don't even sell real estate, you know. They mm -hmm. text me daily. Hey, do we have any, we're looking for homes, you know, we're mm -hmm. looking for hardship cases, we're looking for cheap property, basically, right. that we can buy up. So agents get hit with this all the time. What you're doing is you're just creating a, a database of them. Well, what our platform allows that agent that gets hit up all the time mm -hmm. by the investor to mm -hmm. do is say, great, I'm going to put you into this system, and you're going to get automated alerts. Instead of having to call me all the time, Right. you're going to get them automatically. And that agent doesn't even, that agent can get pinged if they set their target area as the same as the investor. And then when the investor is interested in one of the properties, then they ping the agent. agent. The agent gets notified to then follow up with it with the then listing agent, the non-MLS listing agent. 
This is very much like the foreclosures that they were selling during the back after the recession, where you could get you could get notified by about you know different homes in foreclosure. Yeah, I'm very familiar with that space. Yeah. That's where I got started. That's that where that he space. got started. Yeah. Isn't that great? That's it. Yeah. I mean, this is great. Okay, so we've got so the agent now in charge. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so now. I'm sure that as an agent, you're familiar with this. And I wanted oh, to touch yeah. on this because every, everyone's probably hearing it over oh, there. What are you going to do about that? What are you going to do about that mm -hmm. pocket listing rule? Mm -hmm. Well, it's almost candy as if they made this rule for us to skate through the entire thing. As long as they, they, they close the gates on the pocket listing, and ex with the exception of this opening that we're squeezing through. This was the okay. Yeah, because right now our platform uh, has agents and um, buyers and their buyers receiving those deal alerts. Okay, so within the one network, this one being JPAR, within the JPAR network of agents, they receive their deals and then uh, the deal alerts, and then the um, the agents, uh, excuse me, the buyers receive their deal alerts as well. So what we do in May, when the when this, the, the communication rule goes into effect, we shut off the communication to the agents outside of the brokerage. And that solves that pocket listing rule criteria. This is a new rule that came up at the last NAR mm -hmm. meeting that is trying to, they're trying to dissuade pocket listings, which is basically properties going to a market that are not in the MLS. And this is how, they sort of wrote around your companies then. Mm -hmm. exactly. right. not, by, not intentionally, mm -hmm. but, but yeah. Okay. As, a, as a result of our model that we already had, it, it works well like that. So uh, moving on here, this is what JPAR did. Now we can do this with any brokerage. And that's the whole point of this, and because we're gonna have to wrap up here shortly, but the whole point of this is that you are doing this now with JPAR and you're about to open this up to other brokerages. Uh, yes, right? yes. So other brokerages can do what JPAR did. They branded their own uh, domain, mm -hmm. and JPAR offers then routes their their um, their visitors, their agents to this platform that's specific to JPAR. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to breach. I know we're getting low on time, so I'm going to show you the user interface here for a second. That's actually my CTO. Oh. Um, okay. <laughs> this is. The, our user interface and the, the difference here between us and open door is ours is a platform to submit and offer request so instead of saying hey um, mr. mrs. seller you you're interested in selling your house we as an iBuyer platform are not making an offer to you you're coming into the platform saying with your agent saying I would like to get with your agent you decide on this number and you post an instant offer request into the platform. Not the platform, not the iBuyer giving you an offer. Okay, so we, yes, we come to you. So you're in control. The seller and the agent are in control of yes. the price. Yes, of everything about it. So you set the tone. That's the, that's the change in putting you out in front of the wagon train that's heading out west. Instead of uh, offer pad or open door coming in and saying, here's what we think your home is worth based on all the numbers that we've been able yeah. to pull up. It's a total different essence to the, yeah. to the equation, yeah. to, to put it that way. So, that, so they still hold the reins, uh, the, the agent holds right. the reins as they've always done. But is it the same audience of buyers? Is it the same institutional investors? I mean, I, as my understanding is Open Door has their own, like they have people there ready to buy homes already. Yes. And you do too. Well, they are buying the homes. They're buying the yeah, homes. Yeah, and then right. they put the lipstick on it and then put it out there to the uh, primary residence buyers out there, for right. the general public to buy from them. So you're just gathering up all the people who are interested in doing that? We, we, we yes, yeah. all of the independent investors, investors. and all the big eye buyers that, right. are, that are doing the same thing. And we sort of con, uh, made a, uh, a, uh, a clearinghouse of yes. those yes, guys. Yes, exactly. And then you can put your property in to be seen by all of them. And then the agent and the seller say, this is what we'll sell it for. This is what we would like to like get. To get have at it, have at it. Oh, right. go for it. Right. Gotcha. So here's where you would put their, your seller's information in, mm -hmm. and that would then be just for you. We don't do anything with your seller information. <laughs> so 
So now the, all we're doing is mm -hmm. is putting the seller's data in here to start with. And you can just, I'm just gonna put an address in to start with and grab this and see if that's found, okay? And then you can upload the pictures however you want. Pictures are very important. Oh my gosh, From yes. an investor's standpoint yes. and not a buyer's standpoint. Exactly. I wanna see what the current condition is on the house. Here's where you would upload the pictures. We're gonna skip those steps for now. Oh. But, this but you can do this at home. You can do this at home. These are uh, just the required photos that you're going to need. And I'll show you why this why this is so cool in just a mm. second. Mm -hmm. So you can determine when the, uh, if you know this, and you can go, you can take this to your listing appointment with you as an agent who has the platform. If their brokerage, if your brokerage has the platform, they can do what these guys are doing mm -hmm. at JPAR. And then. It shows that. the seller what the value of their home is. Well, it shows the seller what, and then you can negotiate. We yeah. can get to that screen in just a minute. Yeah. What type of sale, we're gonna assume if they're going through this platform that they're gonna to want to quick, quick sale. Uh, what's the occupancy of the house? And then this is where the agent and the seller can determine what the title of the flyers that are automatically generated by the platform is going to be. To based on the condition of the house. And let's just call this one a light fixer. Light fixer. Mm -hmm. And then here is what it automatically generates for the offer request. Now you can go in as the agent, you can change this number, let's call this, you want to, you've pulled your own comps and you think this is a different mm -hmm. amount. And then this is where you can set, this is what the actual instant offer request would be right here. And then I can adjust that and say, you know what, I'm gonna go up to here. And oops, I'm up too high, that's a warning, warning, you're never gonna get an offer. Whoa. That amount, come back down, come back down. And now I can tell you what, Mrs. Seller, I'm gonna adjust my commission because I know you are gonna buy your next house with me and we've already identified the house. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna take my, commi my commission all the way down and, and not expect anything from you. But we'll leave the buyer's commission in place because we want them to find your, your, your buyer. Your house. Right, yeah. incentive so, to them. And right. here's your net to you right here. Wow. This is what you would get. Now watch this next step. This is a side-by-side -side comparison of what you would get from an investor, what you could get from a big eye buyer, and what you could get if you sold it on MLS. Look at that. Now, if you, Mrs. Seller, are you sure you want to do the instant offer? Because you could get a lot more if you sell it on the MLS. Now, Candy, by, by us not charging anything, by us not charging anything on the platform, we can do this and we don't care which way you go. We don't have any incentive to get you to take as a seller in this an offer. We want what's best for you along with the agent who wants what's best for you. Right. But again, yeah. how are you making money off of this? Well. The popcorn. Where's popcorn. the popcorn? We're going to get the popcorn. Just <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So this is, uh, let's just do that. Oh, let me show you something else. Okay. You can take this with you and, and print this out. Uh, I don't see my browser view here, but you could print this out and take it with you to a, a listing appointment. Mm -hmm. We're putting a print button on here. We're just launching this. This is brand new, by the way. I know. This is like we're, this, we're, we're reporting the news kind of before it's even like ready to be fact, reported, which is, is how we always like to do it on Candy's Dirt. You are the first person, yes. you're the first media source that gets to see to what see this that. platform is. Wow. That's great. This is exciting. Yeah. Okay. And then. So here is uh, where we can either submit the property for an instant offer request now uh -huh. or save it for later. Okay. Or let's preview what the flyer would look like. And this is where the, the photos would be had we uploaded them. Mm -hmm. It would squeeze it all down. Mm -hmm. It would be full of pictures right here. Notice there's no address mm -hmm. on here. Mm -hmm. This is a, a general look at it. There's no information about the house here other than generalities. But it does have that, that ARD and the request, requested offer amount. Mm -hmm. The buyer's agent info is not in here because I'm the listing agent right now. I'm putting this property in as a listing agent. We don't know who the buyer's agent is. The buyer's agents who have access to the platform can come in and browse through and look at the available deals. And if they see something that they think that their buyer might like, they can go grab it and between now and May, they can openly share that with their buyers through their social media and try to get new buyers as well as their existing buyers. Wow. Pretty cool. And then when we submit, oops, we gotta put those pictures in there. So we would have to go in and put the pictures in. Yeah. So let me show you one other thing. And then you have your flyers over here. I'm not gonna go through all of the 
a mechanism now because we could spend 20 minutes on just this. This is the perspective, so I'm going to change my hat now and put my buyer's agent hat on. I have a listing agent hat on, which is all about the seller. This is the buyer's agent hat now, and now I am seeing if there were deals in here based on the criteria that we, we had put in there, which would be, I'll show you, I'll, I'll go through this other, then you would see those available deals there. So here is where you can bring on your buyers. Let me show you that real quick. By the way, let me repeat while you're typing. The name of your company is Offer AI. Yeah. And how did you come up with AI, Offer AI? Because, uh, because artificial intelligence? Well, we, yeah, artificial intelligence, and mm -hmm. we, are, we are slated to introduce some artificial intelligence. What I'm showing you so far, none of this is artificial intelligence. Yeah. This is just. This is tech. money that, I'm, I'm sorry, in, information that is in available that is stored somewhere right, right. we will be putting some artificial intelligence, intelligence in here to, to this. enhance this even more gotcha. which we've got planned okay right, so this go. is where i'm determining what my buyer if i know this information then i would enter yeah. what my buyers uh budget criteria is criteria mm -hmm. would be and what they're looking for what state they're looking to buy how, how old the house is yes got you city zip code yeah. overall condition yeah. so you get the whole thing and then, yeah. and then what condition and yeah then, type and then save or save and invite if we save and invite then it's going to send a text message to that contact here oh and you get this by text yes you're gonna the the, the buyer is going to get a text message that says hey this is this is candy i'm going to be sending mm -hmm. you some mm -hmm. deals uh, log in through here and when the the buyer logs in they're going to be tied to you as the buyer's agent so then you have a tremendous incentive to put every buyer you can into this platform so that you are the buyer's agent for all of the deals that that buyer gets through this platform. Unbelievable. This is, this is what I'm talking about. This is the excitement in real estate, how it's changing. And it's going to be a different game. Yeah, it is. And we're, we're jumping in to, to, to help agents take the lead in that game. Right. Because thus far, they've been playing catch up. They've been, and they've been sort of denying. A lot of them have been of, in denial. Yeah, or they don't even know that it's right. happening. They don't right. know the eye buyers because exactly. a lot of agents don't have never even heard the word. Right. I'm buyer. still explaining it to people. Mm -hmm. Is it what's an eye buyer? What's door versus open door? I mean, there's just all this confusion out there. Mm -hmm. So I have to literally tell the story all the time. Mm -hmm. so. This is an example of a, a deal alert mm -hmm. that uh, an investor buyer would get pinged on their, their mm -hmm. phone. I even get a picture of it too. Yeah, it's got a yeah. picture in, in it gives you information mm -hmm. and then when they respond to that text it's going to ping the agent who invited them in wow that's the buyer's agent and now that buyer's agent they goes oh charlie's interested in a in this deal let me get on the horn show with charlie charlie says yeah i want to see it it's on the horn with the listing agent and it's all handled offline so we we don't do anything with the actual transaction part of it. We you just you just you just you're sort of like a match yeah, like we, a your mm -hmm. match a, a matchmaker. You don't sell your bicycle on Craigslist. On Craigslist, you communicate with the with the buyer, the buyer. of your bicycle, yeah. and you guys coordinate and meet up and do that. You do the same thing with this. It's all a big it's all a big matching, and that's what buying and selling a home is. And you've just figured out a way to do it digitally, electronically, on the computer, still with the realtor involved. Within the iBuyer world, Within that's the, the world. big thing. And this is really the first thing of its kind that's it is come out like yeah, that. It is the first platform. Because if you think about it, there's there's one platform where business business executives can go in and exchange information and in resumes. That's LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. It's free. There's one free platform where you can sell and buy items from your neighbors. That's Craigslist. Mm -hmm. There's one free social media, Facebook. There's one free short blurb, Twitter. Well, this is the free platform for off-market properties. And we don't charge anything in it. It's groundbreaking. So are you looking for investors? Yes, as a matter of fact. Because you're the CEO of the company, the founder, are. and you're going to grow this. Yes. Yep. We've already got three brokerages coming on behind JPAR. So okay. We, so it's going to grow very, very quickly. Can you tell me who they are? I can't, but you'll be the first to know when I can. Okay. I promise. Are um, they large, large brokerages? Uh, medium to large, medium okay. to small, actually. Medium to small? The okay. small, it, it doesn't matter how big they are, and that's where there's some other entities that are that are um, getting in a sort of similar space mm -hmm. 
that are focused only on big brokerages, but we can do it with any, any size brokerage. Which Isn't makes us Reology, um, Caldwell Banker, didn't they launch kind of a similar iBuyer app at Total Banker? Uh, to my knowledge, not like this. Not like this, okay. Yeah. Um, but this will enable the agents to remain relevant in the iBuyer conversation. Mm -hmm. And I'm so excited about it because it's, um, this, is going to, this is going to explode. This is going to be game changer. Big. It's a game changer. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're bringing on brokerages, uh, we're bringing on investors, it's, um, it's ready to go, we're ready to go with it. Absolutely, and, and I hope that we can continue to talk about this in, the, in, in a few, maybe future episodes and kind of check in yes. with you and see, it'd be great to see in like three to four months, you know, where this is going and, and what your success has been. And again, I cannot stress enough that even if you're consuming as, as in real estate, if you're a buyer, if you're a seller, if you're a realtor, you have to stay tuned to what's happening, the changes that are going on, because otherwise it's going to pass you by. I mean, do you want to be a yellow cab or do you want to be an Uber? <laughs> and, you know, I, I tell agents this all the time. This is what I do. I bring you all this new information and try to explain it to you, and I hope we have. And I think that Me everyone too. will understand. If you don't, you can, you know, write into us and comment. And we'll be happy yeah. to, and I'm sure Jack is right here. He's, he's, He'd love to explain it to you yes. and, and help you further understand it. But I think it's pretty clear to me what you've done is you've created, like you say, a new playing field. It's, it's, it's a new auditorium or a, 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 it's, it's Victory Park. You know, it's, it's, it's where everyone can kind of come together and play this game. And I still think I know how you're going to make the money. You're going to charge the brokerages, right? We are charging the brokerages. Yes. We are charging for white label. Oh, oh give me one more second. got to show you. i got to bring this home. Okay, Hold on one bring second. it home. <laughs> I almost forgot a very, very important piece to this. So, this is what we're doing. This is the whole free place. Mm -hmm. this, the, the basic is all free, what we've described so far. That's right. all free. Free, free, free. Now, what the agents can do is we can white label our site. We have the forward facing site offerai.com that looks like this and this is where you can have this site for yourself we'll, we will it's do, branded it, to you and it custom you. branded to you so when if you go back and look at the comparison there side by side of what you've got a girl with named candy here did you do that on purpose no that was an accident <laughs> uh, and this is this is OfferPad next to ours. You can see the similarity yeah. in in the various iBuyers. Mm -hmm. And then this is a contact form where when <laughs> a a seller puts their contact info in here, it's going to go directly to the agent whose white label site this is. No matter what, we don't we don't do anything with it. The agent grabs it. So that means it's customized to that agent. Yes, so it so looks they, like it's their own creation. It's their own agents can become iBuyers. iBuyers. Mm -hmm. Every agent has schedules. Every agent this has this working this platform, if their brokerage uses this platform, every agent in their brokerage can be an iBuyer themselves. It costs uh, Open Door and OfferPad three hundred sixty million dollars to be an iBuyer. Right. And here you can be an iBuyer for one hundred forty nine dollars right now. Whoa! So one hundred forty nine wow. bucks, and you can brand our site for yourself. Now, if you want to do a video package with it, then you might recognize uh, she's a very good agent at, mm -hmm. at J-Park. I do. This is Donna. What Donna did was she branded her, she branded her own domain, DonnaOffers.com, that then points to our affiliate page so that she can then brand her own iBuyer domain and market it however she wants to with video and in any form, even print, wherever she, however she wants to do it, she digitally, she digitally, however, and everybody that comes to there will be hers, okay. uh, which nine times out of ten, they're going to be listing leads. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Exactly. So, 90 so of the time. we'll do that for the agents that are participating right now for 300 bucks. Wow. And that includes the whole white label. So this is wow. not just the video. This is the video and white label. And these are just the, the initial pricing for what we're doing. 
unbelievable and you guys heard it here first and you're hearing it from jack first and you're going to be leaving us and going out to the bay area or to seattle to work on this some more um well that's undetermined as yet okay i'll be here for a while okay in Dallas. I love that it's kind of started here in Dallas too. Yeah, yeah that's really cool because we always think everything starts on the West Coast, you know, in Seattle or, or Silicon Valley. No, this started right here in Dallas, right? Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. And Jack, thank you so much for thank sharing you. so much of this information and really putting up with me kind of, you know, interrupting and saying, you know, explain this, explain this. But I think, I think it's really great. I get it. And I want, to, I want everyone to get it. So thank you again. Thank you. Appreciate it.